additional game situations, advanced breakaways. In goaltending fundamentals, we looked at the initial mechanics of the proper goaltending response to the breakaway, the why theory. Elite goaltenders need to understand the breakaway process from a more cognitive point of view. We need to understand what shooters like to do and what they're likely to do in certain situations. For instance, we also need to understand that breakaways aren't random events. They can be accurately anticipated in many cases. How many times have you seen a shorthanded goal scored on a breakaway? All the time. Breakaways frequently happen when point shots are blocked. or when your defense tries to make risky D-to-D -D passes. When one of your defensemen tries to fire a rink-wide pass, you must be ready for a breakaway. These passes are fairly easy to pick off, and some defensemen try to get cute by trying these passes over sticks or through legs. Be ready, because over 70% of all breakaways are quick developing. They are generated by turnovers at or near your own blue line. If your team makes a lazy line change, a smart team can catch you with a long breakaway pass. When the last man back on your team tries to deke around four checkers, be ready. When presented with a breakaway, a player will, on their initial look at the goalie, subconsciously make their decision. Factors like the amount of backside pressure, the length of their shift or past successes with you will affect this process. Generally speaking, with little time available, the player will almost certainly use one of their go-to moves. The top players will try to freeze you with a fake shot before the deke. NHL goaltenders are frustratingly patient and very adept at waiting out these little fake shots. They have developed this ability to sift through these fakes after years of falling for them and years of study. The keys to success on breakaways are basic. Develop your fake resistance. Be mentally ready early. And learn the go-to moves of the better players. Off-center breakaway. Although this breakaway has a different attack angle, the goaltender should still use the Y theory, as with a straight-on breakaway. We can see how the Y has changed in shape to match the new attack angle. Notice that the initial challenge should be more conservative because the available net is so small on this angle. The law of diminishing returns applies here, which means that there is no concrete benefit to a more aggressive challenge because the net can be fully covered with less depth. To discourage a quick shot, modify your stance by closing up as much as comfortable. Shade a little more to the short side to encourage the player to cut across in front of the net, presumably into defensive support. Fake poke checking and patience will be the two main keys to success here. Situational Positioning Situational positioning, by definition, means that the depth of your challenge off the goal line must vary based on the situation at hand. Small adjustments in depth result in dramatic advantages when used with proper timing to handle the proper situation. Let's discuss some game situations as examples. Anticipating a quick release, Jake grabs a little more depth to fill some more space. With no backdoor option, the goaltender can challenge the wing slap shot a little more aggressively. On the penalty kill, we have an odd man situation, so someone will be open somewhere. We have to be more conservative here on our depth. On an even rush like one-on-one, -on -one, we can challenge more because we match up equally with the attack. Conversely, on an odd man rush like a two-on-one, -on -one, we should be a little more conservative. The elite goaltender can't approach their game with one basic challenge depth they rely upon universally. The situation and the correct reading of it by the goalie require the correct adjustment of depth. Understanding blocking versus reacting saves. Every game situation will require a save that is either blocking or reactive in nature. The blocking save is a save a goaltender makes when they place a closed wall in front of a shot that they will not have time to react to. This save could be a paddle down, closed half pad, two pad slide, or a variation of these. A hard backdoor pass one timer or a full out slap shot from 20 feet are examples of times when a goalie will not have time to react. The reactive save occurs when a goaltender has enough time to read the puck's trajectory and then place a body part in that path. A long point shot, a 20-foot backhander, or any perimeter type shots should give the goalie enough time to make a reaction save. As the level of play increases, the percentage of reaction saves drops. The human being has absolute reaction times, and a 90 mile an hour shot from 25 feet is next to impossible to react to. In the NHL, college and juniors, 90 mile an hour shots are common, and the message for the elite goaltender is clear. 
To play at these levels, you must intelligently anticipate the plays where you won't get a chance to react and respond accordingly with some type of closed blocking save. And wherever possible, read the situations where you will get time to react so you're not entirely a blocking save goalie. Wing Slap Shot the difficulty with this situation arises because not only is the shot itself traveling very fast, but the man is skating forwards rapidly. His skating speed plus the speed of his shot combine to make a tough save even tougher. Many of these shots also end up squeaking through the goaltender, so try to close up your stance as much as possible and ensure you are on angle. You must try to get set in position before the shot is released. If your feet are still moving as the puck is shot, you may run into problems. Every so often, try shifting over a little and give the shooter a little far side to shoot at. It gives you a strong idea where they are probably aiming beforehand. One-on-one. -on -one. If played correctly by the goaltender and the defenseman, this situation should be handled every time. Yet we see goals scored on this situation every night on the highlights. Goaltenders tend to relax a little because of the helpful defenseman's presence. Play the one-on-one -on -one like it was a breakaway. Challenge and react using the Y theory. Imagine that your defenseman isn't even there and you won't get caught sleeping. The player can try to use the defenseman as a screen and release a quick shot through him. A deep shot-ready stance with good depth will handle this easily. They can try to beat the defenseman on the outside. Again, staying out and square will make this play tough on the opponent. A push through and skate around the defenseman is also attempted. Goalies get caught on this variation many times because they become spectators instead of responding as if it was like any other breakaway they face. Two-on-one The classic two-on-one is a dangerous offensive attack, especially with smart players. The goaltender must understand that their responsibility is primarily the puck carrier. The defenseman must fully understand their dual role. They must prevent the pass at all costs and stay in the middle, keeping the shooter to a less lucrative outside shooting angle. Recognize the situation early as it develops and assess what hand the open man is. Communicate loudly with your defenseman. I got the shot! I got the shot! Square up to the shooter with a conservative challenge to encourage a shot. Upon the reading of the release, a subtle depth gain will help fill more space. If the pass does get through, you still must explode over. 3-on-2 The 3-on-2 is another example of an odd man rush, so your conservative challenge should keep you near the top of the crease. As the attack progresses, assess issues like whether your defense has given up the blue line easily, whether there is a wide guy busting to the net, or how much backside pressure is available. All of these factors must play into your approach with respect to depth and to understanding the probabilities of certain attacks. For instance, if the defenseman gives up the blue line and backs in too much, a dangerous shot through them is likely. If they've been too aggressive at the blue line, an open man can easily crash the net looking for a quick pass or a dangerous rebound. Use your intelligent anticipation skills and experience to read the play here. Power Play You must recognize that when your team goes on the power play, it's a very dangerous time. Risky offensive players and risky offensive plays at the other team's blue line are commonplace. In fact, many teams use forwards on their power play to generate offense from the blue line. In theory, this is fine, but a smart goalie prepares for any defensive letdowns in advance. Be alert. Many goalies force quick up passes that are either not available or not necessary. Wherever possible, let your defenseman handle the power play breakout. If you're called upon to play a puck, make safe, controlled passes and try to settle things down. If you're faced with a short-handed rush, make sure you use an aggressive challenge. Penalty Killing Killing penalties successfully requires focus and a keen understanding of your role. Coaches always refer to their goaltender as their most important penalty killer. Let's look at what opponents typically try to do when they receive a power play opportunity. The majority of goals scored on a power play are the result of loose puck scrambles in front or dangerous rebounds. Not surprisingly, teams frequently move the puck around the points looking for an opening for a hard shot on net. The intent here is to crash the net on any loose puck rebounds and cash them in. The goaltender must fight to find these pucks and use rebound diligence. Another common attack is perimeter passing with either a backdoor or centering pass as the ultimate goal. The goaltender should use their peripheral vision to intelligently anticipate the attack. Avoid full-blown explosive movements following these tic-tac-toe passes around. Relaxed concentration is a skill big leaguers use frequently when killing a penalty. 
They conserve energy in a more relaxed stance and only get into a shot ready stance and secure a proper angle once they read that the play is imminent. This is done to conserve energy and to prevent needless movements. On the initial dump ins, be sure to stop the harder rounds if possible. Backdoor Pass The backdoor pass is a dangerous offensive attack that can result in spectacular saves if the situation is approached correctly by the goaltender. The goaltender must be aware that there is a man open for a backdoor pass and with quick looks determine what hand the player is for proper positioning purposes. Recognizing that the pass is imminent, the goaltender must slightly preload their push leg by shifting a little more weight onto it. Keeping the skate blade vertical before the push will give you more power as well. As soon as the puck leaves the passer's control, the goaltender must get a jump on the puck. Many goalies are spectators here and never get to their target position early enough. Attempt to achieve solid attack depth to control the aerial angle and arrive closed, prepared for battle for any loose puck rebounds. One-timers One-timers are dangerous scoring attempts on several levels. Clearly their high velocities make them hard to track, and many times one-timers are released before the goaltender is set. To stop one-timers consistently, we need to rely upon stance closure proper positioning, and intelligent anticipation. Many times the open man will ask for a one-timer with a raised stick. Goaltenders must notice and respond to this visual information. The goaltender must get there with an explosive push and make marginal depth adjustments to fill up space. A big league one-timer will many times either hit you or go in. Understanding this, you must fall back on your positioning and closure to have repeatable success. Point Shots Unless deflected or screened, a point shot must always be stopped, and ideally the rebound shot should be controlled in a precise, accurate manner. When screens and deflections come into play, your priority shifts to making the first save and preparing to play any dangerous rebounds. If you have assessed that there is no danger of a tip or a screen, you should challenge two to three feet outside of your crease. Your gut trapping skills and stick involvement skills will be crucial on this type of point shot. If any mitigating factors like the potential for a backdoor tip exists, then you must use a more conservative challenge depth.